SEAL training will break you down worse than you could ever imagine. The challenges of selection test the mental resilience of all those who are dedicated enough to try. Joining me today is a U.S. Navy SEAL to talk to us about winning the war against your mind. Stick around. With the mental health crisis seemingly worsening each day, it's increasingly important to have conversations around mental health and psychology. So whether it's at work or it's on the battlefield, our brains are experiencing way too much stress these days. This is an episode focusing on one man's story with handling extreme stress and what he did to win the war that was going on in his head. But whether you're a SEAL or not, we're all human and we could all use a little support. I won't be revealing any information about my guest today, and from this point on, I'll be referring to him as SEAL. Looking forward to sharing some insights on mindset and psychology based on my experiences in the Navy SEALs. Can you tell us about Navy SEAL training and what they put you through to break you down mentally? Preparing for this training, I took it very seriously. I was working out two, three times a day with runs, with swims, cardio, strength and conditioning. I really wanted to make sure that I locked down the physical aspect of the training. And out of my group of friends, I was always the one crushing workouts, crushing anything cardio related. What's pretty wild is I show up to training. After the preparatory course, we start orientation. And there's over 230, 240 guys. And all these guys are just studs. You look left, you look right. Everyone is an absolute stud. And you have to compete for a spot to even get into the class. So out of these 240 guys, 100 of those guys aren't even going to make it to start the actual training because you have to physically get the best scores. That was a crazy realization because before training, I was in the best shape, had the hardest workouts that I knew. And now all of a sudden I'm surrounded by guys who are, you know, showing me up. In the first four weeks, you can expect a lot of time in that cold water. They put you in the ocean as much as they can. That was the very first thing we did. As soon as we started training on the very first day, they immediately just put us in the water. You got training evolutions all day long, hours of PT, you just get smoked afterwards. And while you're doing all this, you're constantly wet and sandy. You've got your uniform on all day, all night, soaking wet, covered in sand, just chafing your skin off. You know, you start to develop these sores and it just burns every time you're, you're wet, every time you're running around. You've got timed evolutions that you have to pass. If you don't pass them, then they will remove you from training. You've got room inspections, personnel inspections that you spend hours on that usually doesn't pay off because more likely to, to fail them than pass them. The room inspections are pretty genius on the instructor's part because they will come in and they will find the smallest little things and they'll hit your room. And if you get three hits on your room, then it's a fail. They'll take a little hot sauce packet that's in your fridge and they'll explode it all over your white bed sheets. They'll take ice cream and just leave it on your bed. So as it melts, it's all over your sheets. I remember after the room inspection happened, guys had their rooms tossed so bad. And thankfully my room didn't get tossed. We, we had a pretty tight room. And I just remember helping out guys and their clothes was covered in sand and ocean water. And you only have a certain amount of washers and dryers that you can use. So it was a late night. It was a late night. I remember going to sleep and looking at my watch and I had about a 40 minute nap uh, before I had to wake up for the next day. The training is so intense that even on the very first week of training, you've got a third of the class, maybe a half of the class that, that ends up quitting. One of the training evolutions that really sticks out that I remember very vividly was when we had night surf passage. You have to take your boat crew and paddle these rubber inflatable boats out past the surf and back. And these boats are big enough to have about six people in them. And you're paddling with these wooden paddles. Immediately after showing up, 
the instructors rolled around and they just put us in the water and they just started beating us the first the first two hours of our surf passage evolution was us just getting beat at the water's edge with boats on our heads with boats on you know our stomachs you're doing sit-ups in the surf with these boats and i remember thinking this isn't even surf passage at all it's just two hours of just getting beat six foot waves maybe seven foot waves and you're just getting crushed you're getting absolutely crushed out there the instructors are incredible at at their job they crush you physically take your sleep all the things are thought out meticulously planned so that a class of over 200 guys or over 150 guys ends up in the teens or in the 20s at the end of it and these people tell themselves yeah i'm gonna be a navy seal but by day one they realize that they're not going to do that and they quit or sometimes it takes multiple days sometimes it takes weeks and then they realize that this is not what they actually want people say yeah seal training is mostly mental which i would agree with that it is it is mostly mental because when you lose it mentally as far as your drive and your your passion for for wanting to be there that's when the guys quit a week is notorious for its physical and mental challenges. What strategies did you and your teammates use to push through the darkest moments in Hell Week? It's crazy because you've got so much chafing, but you're in Hell Week and you're just like thinking to yourself, I'm going, I'm going. And, and you know, you think about it, you realize it's there, but it almost gets pushed to the back of your, of your thought process. Hell Week is a crucible portion of the training process and it is the last week of selection so you've got three weeks monday through friday grind and then hell week starts on a sunday night and you finish on friday morning by the time we got to hell week we are now down to four or five boat crews and each boat crew is about six dudes and you get a couple naps Wednesday, they give you about a 30 minute nap and Thursday, they'll give you maybe an hour, but those naps aren't even naps. I know for a lot of guys, your, your brain is just so spun up. I did sleep, but I just had nightmares of what was going on. I actually was dreaming about coughing up my own lungs. So it was, it was pretty bad. I know it sounds crazy, but you see the guys around you suffering and you're all going through it together. And there's this bonding that happens amidst the chaos. And you even find yourself laughing at some of the scenarios that are going on. You've been wet and sandy for almost three straight weeks and you're chafing. You've got open wounds at this point and they keep on opening up and bleeding. From all the chafing that you're getting, they give you medication to actually prevent blood infection and skin infection. So when you go to your daily examination and your your checks they'll they'll give you this medication to prevent that from happening so they do look out for you as far as protecting you against some of those things because they are pushing you so hard the selection process puts you in a very interesting mental state i remember constantly thinking to myself what is going on right now and just being shocked and not really sure what was happening because it was ramped up to a level that i had to sprint to keep up with it makes you think even more about is this my time to go through you know am i going to be successful and, and it creates those those doubts in in the back of your mind and when you have those doubts in the back of your mind and slowly you start to think about that more and more that's what gets it guys that really really takes a toll and is one of the main reasons guys say that they've had enough and that's i think one of the biggest reasons why they quit they do take care of you with your meals and with water they're always feeding you four times a day you're always getting water and they're pushing you so intensely that you have to fuel up You've got to fuel up otherwise it's, it's just not going to work so one thing you really look forward to is running that boat on your head across the street to the galley and enjoying a warm meal 
it was actually a double-edged sword because you look forward to the meal. However, you have to run that boat across the street, which is about a mile. And I remember thinking that I need this food. I can't wait to eat, but I got to run this boat for a mile. And I, you know, you're exhausted, especially by Wednesday, Thursday, you're exhausted and you're running across the street with that boat on your neck and you have to race the boat crews because if you are not first, you have to go do hot laps and run that boat around until you actually are, until the instructors are satisfied and then they'll secure you for your meal. I just remember thinking to myself, I am gonna do whatever they make me do. No matter how crazy it was, I told myself I wasn't gonna let any of that get to me. And my thought process was constantly just do what you are told to do, do it. They tell you to do some ridiculous task, it doesn't matter. This is what they're gonna make me do, I'm gonna do it right now because that's what I have to do right now. And it's easy to get caught up thinking, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do tomorrow? What are we gonna do next week? This is just gonna keep going. But one thing that really, really helped me was staying focused on crushing the task at hand, no matter how stupid and ridiculous it was, it didn't make sense at the time. And I remember thinking, this is craziness, but I don't care, I'm just gonna do what they make me do right now. The pool evolutions were the evolutions I was most excited for because I was comfortable in the water. I grew up with a lot of swimming experience, water sports, time in the ocean. So I was very comfortable. However, they can tell that you are comfortable in the water. So they will take you to your uncomfortable limit and then see how you perform. So I remember when I was doing underwater knot tying and I started to get air hungry and my initial plan of tying all the knots on one breath hold was not gonna work out. So by the time I finished the third knot, and he's done examining it with his fingers, I requested to go up for air. And upon surfacing, starts yelling at me, telling me why I'm not able to do all five knots and just stressing me out. So they'll take you to your uncomfortable limit. Thankfully, I had this on my mind for years and years before going to this training. So I had a lot of reinforcement mentally so whenever things got crazy, I just reminded myself that I've wanted this for a very long time. How do you ensure sound decision-making when stress and stakes are incredibly high? Any practical tips viewers can utilize in their daily lives? Really lean on that support system with those who are close to you. In SEAL training, we had boat crews and the instructors would give us these difficult, tedious tasks, but because we were together in a group, we were able to put our perspectives together and, and figure it out. Whereas if you have to do it by yourself, it's gonna be a lot more daunting. With the crazy schedule and all the stress you're experiencing during this training, it's really important that you think about your thought process and your follow-up thought process as well. Sometimes you are asked to make a decision and you have to think on your feet and come up with an answer pretty quick. This is where it's crucial to take a step back and get a high-level perspective of your situation. So that way you can take all the data and information and make the most sound decision possible. Sometimes if you're really spun up about something, what really helps is taking a few seconds, stopping what you're doing, just taking a deep breath. I noticed that it helped me a lot. There were some situations where I just put everything on pause, inhaled deeply through my nose, exhaled through the mouth, and then kind of recentered myself because you have to relax a little bit. You can't just keep on going at the same speed the whole time. It can be difficult to make a decision on your own. And sometimes it is important to get someone else's opinion or get someone else's idea on what you're thinking about. It never hurts to run something past a person and 
adding perspective to your thought process will only help. And either they will help you decide or they'll help you decide on what you were you know, thinking against. A lot of the times in our boat crews, guys will have recommendations and you've got three, four guys all giving a piece into what the ideal decision might be. And then you've got one guy who takes all that, you know, chews on it for a little bit, and then he makes the call. So sometimes if you've got multiple people all adding in what's on their mind and what they think, it'll help someone come to a conclusion that works best. In our training pipeline, it's interesting because officers and enlisted guys all train together. So as a leader, it's really important that you listen to the people who have ideas, even if they're you know not the best ones, take them into account and think about how that can help you make a decision. One of the things I noticed that made leaders really good at making decisions and being great leaders was when they told the boat crew what to do instead of saying what not to do. Because I noticed that when there's a stressful situation, sometimes guys would start wrapping their heads around the problem and yelling about what not to do. Whereas a quick, concise sentence on clarifying, hey, this is what we got to do better right now. Let's do this. And that just makes the decision making so much easier and gets the job done. It's important that as a leader, you have the technical skills and the leadership skills to get the job done. But arguably one of the most important aspects is having the people skills to talk to your boys and get them involved and motivated to do the task at hand. Going back to my earlier point on having a healthy support system, I'll give you an example on how I leveraged my boat crew to make the best decision possible. One of the last things that we do in Hell Week, and this goes Thursday night into Friday morning, is we have to paddle our rubber boats around Coronado Island, and this takes all night. You are paddling this rubber boat with your boat crew of about six or seven guys and you start to see some weird stuff. You hear some weird stuff. I remember at one point there were dudes who were swimming us out some food and that's kind of a tradition. There's guys who will swim out like McDonald's double cheeseburgers and some snacks to the guys that are paddling around the island. And at this point I was slightly hallucinating. I remember seeing what looked to be a mermaid looking creature swimming towards the boat because it's all black. He's got no light or anything. I just see this thing swimming towards the boat and drop off a bag. And then I realized that it was a swimmer giving us some food and snacks. And that was kind of a crazy moment. And you've got the lights of Coronado reflecting off the water. So your, your mind just starts to paint images. Think about all the stories that I've shared so far. I really leaned on my support system my boys to my left and right, you depend on the people around you. They all did their part, whether it's the guy calling out the stroke count, the person with the paddle who's steering the boat, or even the dude who swims you McDonald's in the middle of the night. We all work together to get the job done. As a result of that, we were able to make the best decisions possible as a collective unit during those stressful times. How has Navy SEAL training changed you as a person and what life lessons did you take away from it? After going through SEAL training, I really notice myself having my head on a swivel anywhere I go. You know, being situationally aware of your surroundings. Let's say you're going to a restaurant and you're getting dinner with friends. When I walk into a room, I immediately start looking around, understanding where I am, where the table is, where we're going to sit down. I start thinking about if we all had to get out of this room, you know, where's the exit? Where's the door? If something weird happened in this room, what are my options? What could I do to help the situation? And 
having a mindset, no matter where you are, that starts running simulations and thought processes, it just helps you potentially avoid any troubles down the road. Another example is if you witness a car crash on the street, you know, some people might think, oh my God, they might get scared and they'll just keep driving and they'll call 911. But, you know, if you witness a really bad car crash, think about how you can help that situation. You know, call 911, pull over, maybe throw your hazards on, block one of the lanes, go see if everyone's okay. I always carry a little med kit with me just in case anything like that happens. So I would say one of the biggest things I've taken away is being an asset to any situation I might come across in life. Another thing I learned after the training was developing a good sense of routine and discipline in life. You will be so much more successful than someone who doesn't have a plan for the week, sleeps in a little bit, it's easy, five days go by so quick. But at the same time, if you're up in the morning and you're productive and you have a plan and a checklist, that week can become very beneficial. And when you stack those weeks and they become months and six months and a year goes by, you can really move towards a very large goal. Teamwork and trust building is also a huge one. A good way that can be developed is by having group meetings or get togethers and making sure that everyone's on the same page. What's really helpful is setting expectations and being hard, but fair when you are laying those expectations out. So that way people understand what their task is. And when you have a team, everyone does their thing, which comes together to get the job done really effectively. Each person in the team can have different roles that need to be handled. And by breaking it up and understanding who handles what, it'll help everything run smoother. Also, every person in the team needs to have humility. The humility to be able to stay true and stay accountable. If someone messes up, then they need to own it. That will help prevent any issues from occurring in the future because now you've owned up to it, you understand how to be better and you have stated that you will be better. And understand that mistakes are normal. We're all human. We make mistakes, we learn from them and we move forward and we get better. So don't be afraid to own up to a mistake because in the end, you will look better after it. I'd also like to add emotional intelligence because if you have a grasp and a control over your emotions, how you say things, how you come off, that will spread throughout your team. If you are really calm, collected, cool, people will resonate that same emotion and that's what you want to spread in your team. The more emotional intelligence that you have, the better equipped you are to handle complex social situations in life. The best leaders that I've been around in my training are the ones who are great role models, the ones that I really respect, and the ones who, despite breaking you down to your core, genuinely care about what's going on, how the students are performing, and who they will select for the pipeline. What advice would you give to people trying to become a Navy SEAL and how can psychology help them navigate all the challenges they'll face? To best prepare you for SEAL training, you have to be ready to take a massive kick in the nuts. And no matter what's going on, don't let it get to you because all day, all night, throughout the selection process, it's just constant, holy shit moments. You're thinking to yourself, I can't believe I'm doing this right now. I told myself that this is what I am going to do. And that is the constant self-talk that was going on in my mind. 
when things got crazy and I couldn't believe what I was doing, I just said, all right, I don't care because I'm doing whatever they make me do. And that got me through a lot. Just take that step, one step at a time. If you can break things up into small executable tasks, then you're gonna give your brain small wins and you need to take those small wins because that'll get you through to the next one. A lot of people have probably heard about the 40% rule and there's always different numbers that get thrown around, but the concept is true. You have so much more left. When you think you're done, when you think that's all you got, your mind has the capability to go way further than you can imagine. And on that note, you have to realize that there are limitations. You have to listen to your body, set smart boundaries, be safe, but also realize that you could accomplish so much more than you ever thought you could. In addition, make sure you're doing your research so you can psychologically prepare yourself for what you're gonna go through. By doing research, you'll learn about evolutions you'll be doing. For example, drown proofing, where they tie your hands and feet behind your back and throw you into the water and make you do various things. All the mind games you have to play after days without any sleep. I always think about the time we laid under boats with our eyes closed and had to answer questions with our hands. When guys inevitably fell asleep, we were put right back in the water and had to try all over again. Expect post hell week issues with your body. Guys have a problem holding back the urge to piss and dudes have to keep Gatorade bottles next to their beds at night. One of the biggest things is to really understand your emotions and not to let them drive any of your decisions. Despite all those hardships and crazy training evolutions, you have to keep your mental focus and you have to keep telling yourself that this is what you want to do and that this is what you're going to do. So when you're around your boys and you've got a boat crew that you're with and you're crushing your training evolutions, you will all have to support each other. And at the end of the day, you really, really rely on the boys to your left and your right because you're putting out for them. You have to really put out to take as much weight as you can so that way your boys will make it through and they'll help you get through everything. Seal went through a series of brutal challenges, both physically and mentally, yet he still managed to fight his way back up for good. By leveraging his critical thinking skills, genuinely caring for those around him, leaning on his support system and piecing tasks together one at a time, he managed to make it through SEAL training. Notice how he didn't ignore the importance of the mind here. No one is immune to mental health struggles. So with all of that being said, I do have one final question I want to ask every single guest that comes onto the show. What gives you the greatest fulfillment in life? For me, it's earning time. Time in life to be with friends and family, traveling the world and building experiences, going snowboarding in the mountains, eating good food, laughing and doing cool stuff with the people I care about. I'd love to have a family one day and have the freedom to be there for my wife and kids and teach them all the values and morals that I learned growing up. And I'd also love to have the time to help others as much as possible. It brings me a strong sense of purpose to be a decent human being because I believe we should all be looking out for one another. And those are the things that give me the greatest fulfillment. So you heard it from the man himself. This isn't about being a tough guy. This isn't about being unbreakable and showing others how amazing you are. It's about living a life of purpose and meaning, a life that's filled with joy and lifting others up. That's a wrap on this one, guys. I appreciate you listening. And I really hope that some of my stories and experiences that I shared today can help you in one way, shape or form in your life.
Really appreciate Jeff having me here. Make sure you guys check out his other videos. He's got some really good content and I'm sure there's more that you guys can benefit from in your day-to-day -day lives. Thanks so much. See you. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time today and thank you Seal for coming on the show and sharing so much wisdom and all your amazing stories. I genuinely hope this episode was insightful, fascinating, or helpful to you all in some sort of capacity. Remember to take care of yourselves. Remember to take care of those around you and for all things psychology to help you think, feel, and perform better. Stay tuned right here, Psychology of Living.